Uh, our last speaker is uh, particularly important because a lot of times you go to these forums and you hear all these horror stories and you um, are left thinking, you know, what do we, what do, we do now? And uh, we're fortunate to have attorney David Slotje um, to talk about that. And as a lawyer myself, it's rare that I use the words of fortunate and attorney in the same sentence. <laughs> Uh, David is the executive director and the senior attorney with the Community Ec uh, Environmental Defense Council in Ithaca. Uh, the CD CDEC is a not-for-profit public interest law firm that provides free, high-quality legal advocacy and assistance to communities and citizen groups in New York whose land, air, water, health, and quality of life are threatened by industrialization. Since CDEC does not charge its clients, they rely entirely on donations and grants from individuals and foundations dedicated to protecting communities. Mr. Slache, along with his wife Helen, have been working tirelessly throughout the state to help communities protect their rural character by passing bans on gas drilling. Uh, tonight, he'll talk about how we can deal with hydrofracking uh, on a local level. So please welcome David Slache. I don't know how you're supposed to follow Sandra. It's sort of, I feel like. Uh, junior high kid who uh, just won a local Battle of the Bands contest, and I have to follow Eric Clapton. <laughs> um, I'm going to stand here so I can see the slides. Uh, I will try to go quickly. Um, I want to, before I get into the nuts and bolts of what you can do at the local level, I want to talk a little bit, given the nature, given the title of this forum, the rest of the story. Um, and. The other speakers co covered uh, much of this, but I want to talk about some of the things that the frackers um, will come in and tell you, or they'll tell your town boards, or they'll tell your planning boards, or whomever they speak with. Um, and uh, I'll try to go quickly with that, but I want to say, tell you what, what they're going to say and then sort of what the truth is behind that. And they do not tell the truth. I understand this is being, uh, this is going on the internet, uh, so bring it on and sue me when I say that, but they do not tell the truth. So um, let's start very quickly. Uh, next slide, please. All right, this is the gospel according to the gas companies. First thing they do, and by the way, this, there's generally a pattern here, and you can sort of see where you are uh, on their roadmap for your community based on how they come in and what they say to you in the beginning. Uh, they, they, always, they always start this way, and, then, and it progresses the same way in, vir in virtually every single town. First thing they, the frackers tell you is that fracking is safe. And by the way, I apologize in advance, I'm not going to read every slide tonight, but I do want to read the first few because this is, this is what they say to you and this is what you need to know about when they come in. Fracking is safe. We do not use any hazardous chemicals or toxic substances. You can trust us. Well, they can say that to you and they don't go to hell for saying that because even though the chemicals they use are poisonous, are very poisonous, they are carcinogens, um, They've got, uh, our, our friends in Washington and our friends in Albany have given uh, broad exemptions to the people in, the, in this industry. Not just industry in general, but people in this industry. Not even the oil industry, just the gas industry. So you'll look at something like the Clean Water Act or the Clean Air Act or CERCLA or any sort of uh, law that you think is out there uh, to protect you that your government set and, it'll, and it'll, it will give you a litany of, uh, of, of 26 compounds and chemicals that for purposes of this particular law are defined to be hazardous or are defined to be toxic. And then you'll get down to the very last. So you go A through Z and there's 26. And then there'll be something that says provided however, that notwithstanding any provision of the foregoing, to the contrary, none of the foregoing A through, tw a through Z um, shall in fact be quote hazardous or toxic for purposes of this law if those compounds or if those chemicals are used by people in the gas drilling industry. Okay? You, you may know that, but it's important to know this, so in case you wonder, when these people come in and tell you that what they're doing is not hazardous or not toxic, that's how they can say that. So turn around and say to them, okay, fracker, but is it poisonous? And see what they tell you. All right, so then they say, okay, well maybe a lot of the chemicals we use are poisonous, but mostly what you, we use is only water and sand. So what you say to that is, okay, fracker, but there's five million gallons at least per, uh, on average for each of these things, and at the numbers that you're talking about, whether it's 3% or 0.5%, isn't it true that there are phenomenally large amounts of these poisonous chemicals that you're using? 
notwithstanding that, yeah, most of it is, is just water and sand. And then they'll say to you, okay, okay. Well, even if we do use a lot of poisons, we leave it all down in the ground anyway. What are you worried about? And then you say, okay, fracker. That's not true, is it? Because you do, in order to get your exemption from the underground injection control pro, uh, program from the, the drinking, uh, water, Safe Drinking Water Act, you told everybody that you didn't leave it down in the ground. Which is it? And they say, okay, you got me. Well, even if we do bring a lot of the stuff back up, the portion we bring up as fluids is safe. It's basically just sort of a table salt, suitable for spreading on roads or even for use in animal salt licks. You say, wait a minute, fracker, that's not true, is it? The stuff that comes up, Sandra told you about, it's got barium, it's got strontium, it's got, you know, all kinds of bad stuff. So, so you're not telling the truth, are you, fracker? Next slide, please. So they say, okay, okay, let's talk instead about how safe drilling is. Did you know that hundreds, heck, maybe even thousands of wells have been drilled? Hundreds, heck, thousands of wells in New York have been drilled that fracked right here. And you know there's never, ever been even one single documented accident respecting fracking? You can look, look it up, honest. Bet those tree-hugging enviros don't tell you that, do they? Well, Sandra already addressed that. That's sort of Bill Clinton, depends on what is, is. They define it very narrowly to talk about fracking. Uh, but the truth is, that's just wrong. So they're not telling the truth about that, are you, fracker? Next slide, please. Okay, okay, so maybe there have been spills and accidents associated with gas drilling, but it is a fact, Jack, that there has never been even, single, even one single documented case of contamination of a drinking water supply. Honest, you can look it up. Well, wait a minute, fracker, that's not true, is it? Isn't it true that in, in, in Pennsylvania alone, in, in Dimmick, uh, you know, a, a member of your industry, in fact, contaminated a number of drinking water supplies? And isn't it, in fact, that a fact that they signed an agreement with the state to that effect and signed an agreement with the state that they would pay to clean it up? <sighs> okay, 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 says the fracker. So maybe a member of our industry did sign an agreement acknowledging that their activities were responsible for contamination of a whole lot of drinking water supplies. But one, they didn't, know, they didn't really know what they were signing. And two, if they did, they were coerced into signing against their will. So that doesn't really count. Wait a minute, fracker. Didn't, isn't it a, a, a fact that that particular company had the, what they considered to be the absolute best lawyers that they could afford? That those lawyers were at the table every single minute that that document was signed? That those, that those lawyers recommended that? Isn't that true, fracker? Next slide, please. Okay, okay, says the fracker. Let's stop talking about safety. Let's talk about jobs. Good, local jobs. Jobs that pay, hay pay hay high wages and keep our kids from moving away in search of better opportunities. Cue the music, it comes up, the flag flutters. Well, wait a minute, fracker. This isn't true, is it? Isn't it true that all the good jobs are not local jobs? They're all for other people from Texas or Arkansas or Colorado. Okay, okay, says the fracker, you got me. So maybe the high paying jobs don't go to locals, but let's talk about private property rights. In America, people have a right to do whatever they want to do with their property. If you don't agree with that, then friend, maybe you just don't belong in this country. Well, wait a minute, fracker. Isn't it true that in the entire history of the United States of America since our founding, it has never been the case that Ownership of private property meant that you had un an unfettered right to do whatever you wanted with your property. Isn't that true that even in England since 1066, the same thing is true? That except for the king, you do not have a right to do whatever you want with your property? And is that only logical, fracker? Because if you and I were neighbors and I could do anything I wanted to with my property, doesn't that really mean you have no rights at all? Okay, next slide, please. Okay, okay, says the fracker. Let's concede we have no clue what we're talking about when it comes to American property law concepts. Instead, let's talk about how so very many financially desperate upstate New York municipalities could make good use of the revenue received from their share of a gas extraction severance tax. Wait a minute, fracker. Isn't it true there is no severance tax in this state? I'm not making this stuff up, by the way. 
I, uh, I was doing one of these uh, a couple nights ago in an Otsego County uh, town, and uh, the, the person who uh, was on the other side got up and, among other things, well, just as an aside, she, uh, she told the town board uh, that I was talking to, that we were both talking to, that if they, if they passed a local law banning fracking, they would be responsible for closure of parochial schools. They would, I mean, she went on and on. And one of the things she talked about was how great it would be to get the money from the severance tax. There ain't no severance tax, folks. Isn't that true, fracker? Okay, okay, says the fracker. Let's talk about roads. Oh, no, 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 never mind. We better not talk about roads. Next slide, please. So this is what the fracker now says to you when he comes in. You know what? It's obvious to me that your mind is made up. You're not willing to listen to any more of industry's half-truths and PR firm-generated claims and sleight of hand. It's obvious to me that you are simply not willing to be balanced. And that's unfair and a shame and un-American too. Next slide, slide, please. So I, as a fracker, am warning you, if you don't let us drill where and how we want to, we're going to take our good jobs and safe drilling techniques and white pickup trucks, and we're just gonna go somewhere where our industry feels welcome. I'm warning you, we will simply pick up and leave if you don't let us do this and do it our way. Next slide, please. Okay, 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 just kidding, just kidding. Truth be told, we ain't going nowhere. Next slide, please. Unless you decide to throw them out. Next slide, please. One of the most dangerous misconceptions being spread by the pro-fracking camp is that local governments do not have the power and authority to ban a particular industry from their borders. They do. Next slide, please. So what I'm going to talk about in the time that I've got left, um, I want to get through this quickly um, so that you can give uh, uh, questions uh, to the uh, other speakers, is how to use your local laws to protect the health, safety, and community assets of your, of your town. Next slide, please. Um, we're going to talk very briefly about using zoning laws or laws of general applicability. Um, general, laws of general applicability means essentially that they apply everywhere within the town. Um, we're going to talk about for you, uh, you uh, any towns here that don't have um, zoning, we're going to talk about using police power based laws to affect the same thing. And we're going to talk about using a moratorium to sort of uh, freeze the status quo um, while your municipality considers uh, those options. Next slide, please. Basically, what the local governments have is uh, the right to pass any laws, local laws, as long as they are not inconsistent with the state constitution or a general law of the state. Next slide, please. All right, you may have heard uh, I want to say, I want to deviate from where I am right now very quickly. I don't know how many people in here are uh, private citizens as opposed to municipal officials. And if I did know, I would probably temper what I'm about to say. Um, but I'm going to assume that most of you are not municipal officials. Uh, with respect to the ones who are here, thank you for being here. With respect to the ones who aren't, I would urge each one of you citizens to find out why your representatives are not here. When we go to town boards and we talk to people, we sometimes run into town board members who say that they do not have an opinion on this issue. They don't have an opinion whether it's good to let fracking into their community. This is not 2008, it is not 2009, it is not 2010, it is the end of 2011. And if you've got an elected official who doesn't have an opinion on this issue right now, fire them. Fire them. Sometimes we go into a town and those same people will not give you their opinion. You know, I think they think they're some sort of uh, prospective Supreme Court of the United States uh, judicial nominee who is afraid to sort of weigh in on one of the, the big issues uh, in, in front of the country. Uh, they're not. They're not. They're town board or village or city council people. And if they will not tell you their opinion, 
on where they stand about whether fracking should be allowed into your committee, fire them. Sometimes we go into these communities and they tell you that they have done their due diligence. Oh yeah, we've been to Pennsylvania. We've done all this stuff and I've done my due diligence and you know what, I'm neutral. Let me tell you something, there's no such thing as neutral. If they tell you they're neutral, they're for fracking. Plain and simple, that's, that's how it works. That's how the law works on this issue. You have the right to keep them out, which we're gonna talk about in a moment. But if they tell you they're neutral, they're pro-fracking. And don't let them tell you they're neutral just to get past November. November's coming up, and if you're interested, you've got something you can do with November. All right, so is it true that the oil and gas drilling law statute preempts local control? What the gas, uh, what the frackers will tell you, uh, there's a law, uh, it's called uh, Environmental Con Conservation Law 230303 subsection 2. I'm going to refer to that as the gas mining law. What that says is that a local municipality is preempted, in other words, does not have the authority to enact or pass a law regulating gas drilling. Okay? So thou shall not regulate gas drilling. Next slide, please. So what does that mean that, that uh, the power of the local uh, government is, uh, to regulate gas drilling, gas mining, is superseded. Next slide, please. You can't see this. I'm not real good at PowerPoint, um, but what it is is a picture of why I went to law school, Perry Mason. Uh, actually, I went because of Della Wood. But, um, uh, but what it shows in the bubble is it says, of course, only the DEC may regulate gas drilling. What happens is these frackers come in and they pound the table, and they talk about the gas mining law, and they say only the DEC may regulate drilling. Only the DEC may regulate drilling. They're right. That has nothing to do with the price of tea in China, however. Because as Perry says, that's not the end of the inquiry, is it? Is it? Please speak up, he says. The jury can't hear you. Next slide, please. So what does relating to the regulation of, the, of gas drilling mean for preemption purposes. In New York State, the highest court of law is the Court of Appeals. Usually you hear something called the Supreme Court, but in this state, the Supreme Court is the trial court, the lower court. The highest court in New York State is the Court of Appeals. And what the Court of Appeals, the highest state, the highest court in the state of New York has said unequivocally, albeit in a slightly different context, is that the legal effect of language I virtually identical to 23032 is that while a town may not regulate the operational processes of the industry, which is the subject of such language, the town absolutely may prohibit the industry altogether. Next slide, please. The slightly different context where the highest court of the state has spoken on this issue is the context of mineral mining. Uh, mineral mining is anything from stripping topsoil to mining for sand or gravel and then some other sexier things, as opposed to gas mining. Applying all traditional rules regarding statutory interpretation, those are rules that no lawyer can agree with, no okay? There's no reason why the language in the gas drilling statute, 230332, should be interpreted any differently than the language than the way that the, 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 the highest court in the, in the state uh, interpreted the same language in the mineral mining statute. Next step, slide, please. So, and there are no cases on this, by the way. Okay, this is, has this is not come up. There are no cases that say that we're wrong either, by the way. So, when, so we believe the Court of Appeals, when, and it will, when the court has occasion to answer this, to consider this question, it will hold that a municipality is in fact preempted from regulating the operations and processes of gas drilling, but is not preempted from prohibiting drilling outright throughout the entire town. Some people will say, well, somebody will come up and say, well, we heard this case in Pennsylvania said that, you know, that may be true, but you know, you've got to allow it someplace. No, the law is different in Pennsylvania. Okay, who agrees with us? Funny you should ask, next slide, please. Um, this position has become pretty much mainstream, not pretty much, this position has become mainstream, uh, at least among lawyers who have actually looked at the question and who don't represent gas companies. Uh, bon Schenick and King, which is the largest firm in the state outside of New York City, so the largest firm in the state, 
uh, in upstate New York, uh, and one of the, by anybody's lights, one of the most conservative, has said, for the record, in, a pub in an opinion published online, uh, it's very current and stated May 12 of this year, the author does not perceive any sound basis for believing that the gas drilling preemption language will be construed any differently than the mining statute preemption language. That's online. By the way, anybody who wants a copy of this, uh, either as a PowerPoint or if you don't have PowerPoint and you want it as a PDF, uh, ask us later and, and you're welcome to this. All right. So the Association of Town, I presented uh, to 90 people uh, the second week of August with a lawyer from the Association of Towns. Most of you in this audience will not know who that is or what that is. Uh, if you had municipal officials, they would know. It's basically a clearinghouse. It's where the towns basically get their form laws. It's a lobbying group for the, for the localities, et cetera. Very, very, very conservative group. Um, the lawyer with whom I presented uh, said that it is way past time uh, to uh, debate this preemption question, that as far as he's concerned, absolutely no question. Um, the towns do have authority to uh, pass the kind of laws we're going to talk about. Um, that's the Association of Towns, and he said, let's move on. Okay, um, and we have moved on. All right, uh, next slide, please. Okay, um, so um, before the, the mic is wrested from me, um, basically what we're talking about here in the first instance is passing an amendment to your existing zoning codes if you do have zoning to uh, zone out gas drilling. Um, it can take any number of forms and it not, needs to be done on a town by town specific basis because we don't want to get, uh, we don't want to hurt anything that's valuable uh, to your town. But to the extent that your comprehensive plan, if, you if you've got a comprehensive plan, it doesn't matter how old it is, if your comprehensive plan um, is, uh, contemplates development of your municipality in a manner that is inconsistent with the industrialization of your town that inevitably follows allowing gas drilling in, uh, we can uh, do a zoning amendment for you. We will do it, uh, and we'll do it for free, if you're interested, if you can get your, your town to do it. Next slide, please. Uh, must we update our comprehensive plan? No, broad objectives are fine. Uh, let's go. Let's go. Um, this is the sort of thing, what we have to look at things as we go to see what's in your comprehensive plan to make, we, we can't just do this in a vacuum. We've got to make sure that your comprehensive plan actually supports us, or we've got to do some things that are tantamount to an amendment to the comp comp comprehensive plan. But being tantamount to an amendment does not mean you have to spend $20,000 and get a grant from somebody and, uh, and, and, and spend three years to do a new survey of your people. We can do it basically, um, uh, if your town board lets us, we can do it in about three weeks. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Uh, next, please. This is just what I was alluding to right now. The, comp the, the law is, uh, New York State Town Law 272A says zoning has to be, quote, in accordance with a comprehensive plan. But the comprehensive plan is not limited to that piece of paper that is on your town clerk's desk or whatever you publish on your website, the town's website is a comprehensive plan. That comprehensive plan also includes updates and supplements, which may include various goals and standards adopted by the town board. That's why we're, we can amend this in about three weeks. Let's go ahead. Okay. Um, this, I'm sorry, I, I'm, I just wanted, this is important. Uh, the New York State Court of Appeals, again, the highest court in the state and the Supreme Court of the United States has made clear that a municipal zoning ordinance predicated on the state's delegate um, um, will be struck down only if the ordinance bears no substantial relationship to the police power objective. This law is not going to be struck down if it's drafted correctly. Next step, next slide, please. As long as it's not arbitrary and capricious, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Keep going, please. Keep going, please. Keep going, please. Keep going, please. Um, keep going, please. This is nuts and bolts. Keep going. Your lawyer must read the entire code to satisfy herself that there's no inconsistencies or ambiguities if, uh, when it comes time to amend this. So there's no, this can be done quickly, but uh, it should be done by a lawyer, and it should be done by a lawyer who knows what she's doing. Next uh, slide, please. 
Okay, um, some of you may not have zoning, and you said, what can we do? Uh, as long, you, you, whether you have zoning or not, you have something called police power authority. Police power authority is the inherent authority of a municipality um, at any level, whether you know, it's, uh, it's Albany or it's Hammondsport or wherever, uh, to pass laws uh, to, for, to protect the uh, health, safety, and welfare of the municipality's people and to protect that municipality's assets. So um, you've got the right to do it. We can do it without zoning. Next, uh, moratoria. Uh, if, you, um, if you need some uh, time uh, to convince your town board members that uh, this is the right thing to do, next slide, please, we can do something called uh, a moratorium in law. And what that does is we can say, you know, from the time we pass, for a reasonable period of time, it should, probably shouldn't be more than nine months initially, uh, you can say, uh, thou shall not have any gas drilling in your town, um, and that, that will be enforceable. Again, it's gotta be done correctly. Okay, let's go, sorry. Can our town be challenged? Yes, Virginia, there can be a lawsuit. Let's go, let's go. This is, a, this is uh, the other thing that these people come in and they pound the table and they say, you can't regulate. They pound the table and say, takings, takings, takings. If you tell me what I can do with my property, that's a taking. No, it isn't, fracker. This uh, highlighted language in the second bullet point is, uh, is from a case called Garnett Asphalt. It is uh, a case from the Court of Appeals, the highest court in New York State. I'm running late, but I wanna read it. This is critically important language. A municipality is not obligated to permit the exploitation of any and all natural resources within the town as a permitted use if limiting that use is a reasonable exercise of its police powers, which it is, to prevent damage to the rights of others and to promote the interests of the community as a whole. It ain't a to taking folk. This is the highest court in the state of New York. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. United States Supreme Court. This may or may not be good enough for the frackers as far as authority. The notion that a property owner may establish a taking simply by showing that they have been denied the ability to exploit a property interest that they heretofore had believed was av available for development is quite simply untenable. United States Supreme Court. Next slide, please. Um, that's it. Thank you.